And good evening. Welcome to Television Centre Bracknell. Yes, it's a late night show tonight with you, Chris Reardon, on the Thursday, the 22nd of June 2017. Welcome to a bit of a, a late night chat this evening, boys and girls. Uh, I wasn't with you this morning. Very, very busy this day. Very, very busy today. I got up uh, around about nine o'clock. And uh, I had to put in my new plants. You remember I said to you, I went to the garden, the other uh, garden centre just uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, well, they've sat in my in my back garden waiting to be done. And I thought I must do those today before I do anything else. So I spent the morning putting my new plants in the garden and giving everything a good water. Um, fortunately, it's cooled off a bit now. Oh, it's so much more comfortable, don't you think? Even this afternoon, I suppose it was about. About 75, 80 degrees, something like that this afternoon. But it was pleasantly comfortable, you know. Um, so I was able to do my bits and pieces in the garden. Then I went up the swimming pool. Only two of us in there today. Only two of us in there today. Trevor, who is the manager of the swimming pool that I go to. Um, I go to the uh, Hilton Hotel. Um I go to the Hilton Hotel. Uh, they've got a... Uh, it's not, not like a posh Hilton. It's not like the London Hilton Hotel. You know, it's the chain. Don't think there's, like, gold-stained glassware and gold staircases with lights going up and more anything like that. My mate's got lights going up his stairs, Ronnie. Honestly, he's got... <laughs> <laughs> He's got little lights that change colour going up his stairs. And they're kind of like a little tube thing. Like almost a mini rope light. Do you remember those? Do you remember the rope lights? I had one when I was a mobile DJ back in the 80s. Chris Reardon's mobile DJ. Oh, yes, a little rope light that used to go flash, flash and along. And the, the only trouble with those old type of ones, if one bulb went, you'd lose a colour. So you might have red, yellow, green, blue in there. And if one of the blue bulbs went, all the blue ones would go off. They wouldn't default to all being on. The whole lot would go off and you'd lose those. And I did try and repair one once. And it was nigh on impossible. Because what I had to do was stretch out this tube, which, of course, every time you let go, it coils back up again, doesn't it? Stretch it, carefully remove the, the, the wire, which is a bit like fragile fairy lights. Find the bulb that wasn't working, replace it and pull it all back in. Of course, it never worked the second time. In fact, once you put all the wires back in again, none of them worked. <laughs> it just didn't happen. It really didn't bother go. So, yeah, he's got one of those in his house. Um, so, as I say, uh, Trevor said to me, um, uh, how's the weight loss going? I said, well, I've lost nine pounds now in three weeks. He said, he said, don't forget to keep up the exercise. And I said, no, I'm here almost every day doing my swimming. He said, um, do you want to do a little program in the gym? And I've tried this a few times. Now, I'm going to have to, I've got a bit of water in. I'll tell you why. I've got a bit of acid coming up tonight, which hasn't happened for a while. And I, I'm pretty sure it's what it's potatoes that create acid problem. Actually, let me have a look at that. Let me just have a quick look at that while I'm chatting to you. Potatoes, 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 acid reflux. I wonder if there's anything about that. Um, learn about mm, top 10 heartburn fruit triggers. Is potatoes in there? No, it's not. Oh, isn't that strange? I don't know why that is then. Yes, but I've, I've worked out potatoes often give me the acid reflux, which isn't, isn't very pleasant at all. Anyway, that's why the water's there. Um, so Trevor said, do you want me to do a little gym programme? We said, why don't you try some of that? He said, you've been coming here two and a half years. I haven't, I haven't been on a machine yet. And, you know, I, I think I would get bored very quickly. I really do. I might. I don't want to go. I don't want to be like one of those blokes like that. Oh, I'm a, I, I'm, I probably would lose interest before I got half that distance. Anyway, I think that looks awful, don't you? Have you seen you know these muscle builders and all that with veins going? All, oh, it's horrible. I mean, they might, you know, you bang them. It's like banging a brick wall, isn't it? When you bang them on the chest. <laughs> I don't like that. Nice bit of definitions, all right. Don't you think, girls, in a man's body? But not those. It just looks awful. Bodybuilders, just horrendous. So I don't know. I might, I might give that a go. That's what Trevor said to me uh, this morning. 
So I'd done my swim. There was only two of us in the swimming pool. Two of us. But that's all right, wasn't it? We had one side each. Um, had a shower out of there. Uh, came back here. Um, uh, done my lunch, which was... Uh, what was that now today? That was... I don't, once again, I've done too much rice. Every, I don't think there's been a single time where I've got the amount of rice right. I've never had too little. It's always too much. Because you put it in the pan, don't you? you? put it. Oh, it doesn't look very much in there. Then you put another lot in. Oh, it still doesn't look much. Then you put another lot in. <laughs> Not only was there too much rice, I'd saved too much of my dinner last night. Because I did a corn stew, a corn stew thing in the uh, in my um in my new um slow cooker. The other one broke. The the button just was hanging off. And on, on inspection, the button was only glued on. And it was a good one. Panasonic. You would have thought Panasonic, that would have lasted years. I don't think I had that more, much more than a year and a bit. Anyway, chuck that away, got a new one, because they're only 32 quid off Amazon. What was it, a Peter James or James something or other? I can't remember. It had a name on the front. And the, the button on that one looks a lot more... Um, uh, a lot more substantial. So I did one of my corn stews in there last night. That's, that's corn pieces, uh, peas, onions, carrots, sweet corn, because I had some sweet corn in tins just about to go out of date, and uh, a, a whole jar of gravy, because it's a big one. Eight litre pot, this is. So I'd done all that, filled it up right up to the top. So I had some of that yesterday. Then I freeze a load of it in little dishes. I've run out of freezing dishes, actually. And then I save some for this afternoon, which I had this afternoon, but I saved too much. And, you know, I had one of those one litre jugs. Well, that was, <laughs> that was full up with this stuff. That on top of the rock, I couldn't move afterwards. Couldn't move after, but all three foods, no sins in there other than the gravy. So I'm estimating three or four on the sins value for the gravy, probably. Uh, time I had that. I couldn't eat any pudding because it was just stuffed after that. Couldn't eat any pudding. And then I became very tired. But Ronnie came round. We had a cup of tea. And then uh, and then I think I went to bed after that. He went home and I went to bed because uh, I was really tired after that. Um, now, why have I written that down there? Let me, oh, do you know I haven't done my food diary yet? We have a food diary to do. Actually, have I, I don't know if I've got one left. Have I got any food diaries? I might not have a food diary. I bet you can probably print one off, actually. On Slimmer's World. Yeah, I'll probably do that. I was just talking to Adam the Prummer uh, a moment ago, actually. He's lost another two and a half pounds this week on the Slimmer's World, which means his total loss is now three stones, four and a half pounds. <laughs> From Adam the Plumber. How fantastic is that? And to celebrate last night, he had a Papa John's pizza. <laughs> which is about 70 sins or so. And apparently he didn't like it. He said it tasted awful. Because, of course, your, your taste buds changed, I suppose. It takes a while. Once you're in the swing of it, it's easy. It really is. The worst thing now I could do was to go, would be go and buy a bag of cheese and onion crisps. Because it's like smoking. You have that bag of crisps and you're addicted once again, dear. Terrible. I have seen people in Slimmer's World, I've seen them with my own eyes in there, get a bag of cheese and onion crisps, crush them up, put them in a syringe and inject them into their veins. They're addicted to cheese and onion crisps. What a terrible... St I mean, there should be help for those sort of people. There really would. There should be help for those sort of people. Um, I had... Uh, uh, I, I Actually, you know, I say that your taste judge buds do change. Um, a, a few years ago, it was, I gave up crisps for Lent. So for six weeks, I had no crisps at all. Lent finished, I thought, I must have a bag of crisps. And I opened them, and I started eating them, and I didn't realise how salty these things are. They must be so bad for your crisps. Absolutely caked it. All I could taste was salt. And it took me three bags to get used to them again. All in the same day. <laughs> Worst thing you can do. It's like smoking. Worst thing you can do, have a cigarette. Isn't it? It's true. Um, so that's it. I went to bed. Uh, got up again. Um, I made some po I made some posters tonight. Do you want to see them? Made a couple of posters. You can, you can do There's all sorts of... Um, uh, online poster, make a poster type things that you can do now. Here's the one for my quiz nights. I made that. Okay, I've, actually, I made that one last night. I did that one last night. Looks good, doesn't it? Isn't that impressive? All free. So what you do, you've got a template. If you look carefully, uh, for example, where it says every Wednesday, okay, underneath quiz night, it said King's Head Theatre Pub. And underneath that, 
the address, 150 Upper Street. If you look carefully, you'll see that the yellow doesn't quite match. Now, if, if I spent some more time, I could probably get it to match, but it doesn't. So underneath those things is something else, and I've covered them up with my own... Um, my own sort of uh, 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 text there, you see. All right, so that's quite easy. And also, something to tell you about this one. Okay, this one. Now, this is a charity event we're doing at the end of July. There you go. It is a karaoke night. I made this poster tonight. Isn't that impressive? I think it's, I'm very pleased with that. That took me about 20 minutes. It's a karaoke night, and this is actually happening on Saturday, the 29th of July at uh, 8 o'clock. Okay, uh, it's a karaoke night. I'm working for free. Uh, along with the girl who's running all this, Rosemary and Anne. And we're raising money for several things here, as you can see at the top there, in support of the Barry Manilow Music Project, uh, Project, Cancer Research and the Dogs Trust. Trust. Woo, woo, woo. Will we have any actual dogs there, I wonder? Possibly some of my exes will turn up. They could be classed as dogs. I think. Will we have any dogs there? I do hope so. Not big ones. I can't be doing with Alsatians. Little ones. Little Scottish Terriers or something like that. Scottish Terriers. Maybe she'll come herself. You know, what's her name? Who's that Scottish woman? <laughs> Who is that ghastly Scottish woman that no one likes? What's her name? Nicola Sturgeon. Maybe she'll turn up. Anyway, it's being held at the Fox and Flower Pot at the Goldsworth Path, Goldsworth uh, park Centre, that's where the pub is. It's an actual pub. Uh, actually, a, a, a better place, um, a, um, oh, not example, what am I saying? A better description of where it would, where this pub is, is in the Waitrose car park in Woking. That is a better thing to tell you. The pub is actually in the Waitrose car park in Woking, all right? That's where it is, the Fox and Flower Pot. So if you, uh, flop, Fox and Flower Pot. So if you want to come down there, it's on Saturday the 29th of July uh, from eight o'clock, all right? We're, looking, we're all looking forward to doing that one. And Rosemary, I've got to go down the pub uh, within the next couple of weeks and check it out anyway. Perhaps we can have another one of our lunches, Rosemary, if you're watching this. All right, so I've done my posters. As I say, uh, I had some baked beans on jacket potato when I got up again. Um, and I think it's the, 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 the white, it's the potato that's given me a bit of acid today. Then I went over to uh, Ronnie's house. I had a cup of tea over there. And uh, him and his boyfriend are sitting there watching Big Brother. How uninteresting. But you can see it. It's a ghastly people. Have you watched it? Dreadful people in it. So, uh, most of them look very nice. But the selfishness and the me, me, me. Awful. Not interested in anyone else at all except themselves. They're awful people. Just because you look nice, it doesn't mean what's underneath is nice, does it? Oh, gosh. Although I have to say, I was very much taken with the decor of the kitchen. It's very bright and bold colours, and the floor is the die. I love the floor. I don't know if there's a picture on the internet um, uh, to show you there, but um, do you want me to have a look? Do you want me to have a look? I can have a look if you want. Uh... Let me have a look. How do I do that? Let me see, because I think I can now bring up... I can I can find pictures now. Big Brother Kitchen. Let me have a look for you, all right? <laughs> Let me see if I can find that. Big Brother Kitchen. No, nothing there. Is that it there? No, no, that's it. no they're old one. They're old kitchens. That's not the Big Brother Kitchen I saw on the telly tonight. Uh, maybe if I type in 2017. Uh, I don't know. Uh, 2017. That's it. Try that. Big Brother Kit. No, there it is. That's it there, I think. Okay. Now, how am I going to do this? Let me, ju let me just save image as Big Brother Kitchen. Talk amongst yourselves for a moment, boys and girls. I'm going as quickly as I can. Right. Save that. Close that. This is all very exciting, isn't it? Now, I've got to split this so you can't see me doing it. Okay, right. We do that. You can't see this happening now. No, no you can't. Well, this works. Because I well, someone sent me a picture of that um, dreadful fire the other day. You know, the big fire that they had at, um, uh, in, um, in West London. And uh, I, could, I didn't know how to do it, but I'm, I'm learning this now. Look. So image, 
It's a bit long-winded, I know, but you can't. I know you can't. There he is. Let me go. Do that, and then line it up. Transform. Fit the screen. Ready? Here it goes. Go. Ha ha! Look at that. How clever am I? So that is the Big Brother kitchen. Don't you love that floor? Look at it. What a fantastic floor. I just love that. I would like my... Oh, obviously, my kitchen isn't as big as that. Uh, but I would love my kitchen like that. Is that doing it for you, anyone? How do you fancy a kitchen like that, boys and girls? You do, do it. Oh, come on. Get rid of that awful magnolia wall that you've got. Or white with a hint of green or something like that. I want a floor. Like, I mean, I've got a nice floor. My kitchen floor is lovely. It's slate tiles, so they're bumpy. They're not flat. Um, but I, I just, I think those colours are delicious. Absolutely not. I think I must arrange a nice, bright, colourful kitchen like that. So we watched a bit of Big Brother. Um, then uh, I cycled. I cycled to and from my mate's house. Uh, I had to go to... Um, Sainsbury's to get some bananas. I'd run out of bananas and some uh, some chopped up onions. I'd, I'd run out of chopped up onions the other day. I had to chop my own up. Isn't that awful? God's sake, man. The eyes were streaming and everything. Even the cat walked out the house. Oh, bless her. She doesn't know what's going on at all anymore. She just... <laughs> Honestly, that poor cat. And she, I have to say, with the cat news... She's she's eating a lot and losing a lot of weight now. I mean, her, her little legs, bless her heart. I was watching her eat this afternoon. And she stands with her like back legs apart and they look so thin. She's so thin now. But I don't think she's in any pain at all, you know. I think she's all right. She doesn't seem to be in any pain. She just isn't there. Dementia. I don't know if that causes muscle wasting or anything like that. Um... Come back here, and uh, and here I am. Hello. Also on that Big Brother thing, uh, it, it's it's Ronnie's boyfriend that loves. He loves all that trash television, and it is trash. It's dreadful television on Channel Five. I have to say, you know that bit where they come outside, and like they got the presenter there. Is it is it Davina? What's her name? No, it's Emma. Is it Emma? She's standing there, and it's it's ghastly red outfit that she had on. And um, then you saw the crowds of people. Well, there weren't any. There was a few people there on the left. On the right-hand side, there's no one there, just a line of people at the front. That's how popular that crap is. How are they selling this to the advertisers? <laughs> Someone's cooking the figures. There can't be many people watching this rubbish. Dreadful. And then, in, the, in that kitchen that I just showed you, uh, they had a, like, chocolate machine, which I found... <laughs> <laughs> when the camera zoomed into it, I didn't. I I said, "Are they making pots?" Because it looked like one of those pot of wheel things. And Ronnie looked at me. He said, "No, it's a chocolate fountain." I said, "Oh, is it?" <laughs> I, I should have put my glasses round there, shouldn't I? Anyway, so I got this chocolate fountain. Oh, just to put your cup under that and have a. And they were picking up, pick, getting cups of chocolate and throwing it over each other. I mean, how childish are these people? I suppose the average age in there is probably about 26, you know, and it's all they're all up for uh, uh, up for it. You know, <laughs> they're all up for that. That's what they're up for. And there's some old bloke in there as well called Joe, who apparently is straight and has got a family. He looks like he's got eyeliner on. Did you see him? He's got a recognisable face. So I'm sure I've seen him somewhere before. He seems all right, Joe. You know, and I, I, I can't work out what he's doing in there. Because there's lots of other people in there who are all young and pretty and I wouldn't fit in in there. I wouldn't go on there. If you offered me £10 million, I would not go on there. And that's true. That's, oh, got to do it for the money. Got to do it for the money. You shouldn't do anything for money. That's it. So I watched that come back home and, uh, and here I am chatting to you. All right, let's say hello to some of the people uh, with us this evening. Good evening, Danny Davis. In Wrexham, in, in uh, Wrexham in Wales. Evening, Danny. Uh, Gavin Matthews is with us tonight. Hello, Gavin. Uh, Mark Cording is at a karaoke in Bank, are you? Gosh. Hello to Jerry Millen. And thank you, those of you that are sharing this on your wall. That's always appreciated. Thank you, those of you sharing this on your wall. Uh, good evening to non-Irish Mary from Ireland, uh, who says uh, she's happy there are no helicopters. When it, she, she often has helicopters flying over her house. They keep an eye on Mary. 
Yeah, I know. I think she's a bit of a troublemaker, is our Mary. I think that's what the, the police are constantly circling her house, waiting for her to come out and attend another karaoke night somewhere. Ain't that right? <laughs> Hello to Anthony in Latvia, where I'm very popular in Latvia. Did you know that? Have you been? Oh, yes. They've got statues and little shrines to me and everything. They often ask me to go and speak at the government uh, 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 events, but I'm afraid I'm, I'm always very, very busy, unfortunately. Hello to Mike Cullen. Good evening, Mike. Uh, Lewis is there. Hello, Lewis. David Jackson. Uh, Adam Plummer is with us, who's lost all that weight. Shania's there on the Isle of Wight. Well done for staying awake, Shania. Uh, Danny Davis says, I used to have the lights too. What lights did you have, Danny? The lights going up your stairs. Did you really? <laughs> I mean, what for? Why would you want that? You go in my mate's house, it's like a bloody cruise ship there. I'm surprised. <laughs> Hello to Lou O'Kill. Hi, Chris. Your intro is very long. Do you have any rituals that you go through during that time? Take care. Lou, hello, Lou. Uh, the reason for the intro is because if I was to just switch on and start, I could talk for 10 minutes and you might miss end some of that. It might be important. So that's why there's an intro. It tells you there's five minutes. Ah, oh, there's a show on in five minutes. You do what you want to do and then, uh, and then you know it's going to be there. That's why there's a five-minute intro. That's why. You don't have to sit there and watch the five minute intro, but you, do you know what I mean? So then, you know, you, you don't miss it from the beginning. That's the reason for that. Hello to the lovely Eloise. Greetings, Eloise, who likes my pictures of my flowers. I did post up uh, a whole album today of pictures that I took this afternoon of my garden, various flowers. Now, my garden isn't isn't covered in flowers like you see some of them. Unfortunately, I don't... Excuse me, I've got itchy nose. Uh, I don't have a south-facing garden, but there's always something flowering. Do you see what I mean? You go in some people's gardens, and they look fantastic. Some people... I don't know how they do it, but some people's gardens, they look fantastic. If you've got a south-facing garden, you're laughing. If you haven't got a south, it's a bit more difficult but you can usually get something flowering in there at any given time. So there's always a flower somewhere. Some people's gardens, uh, certainly when they first start off, what they do is they fill it with flowers that they see, you know, in the garden centre at, uh, at whatever time of year. And for four weeks, they're covered in flowers and then nothing. You see, the idea is to get a plant that flowers one then, and one a little bit later, and one a bit later, and on and on. So I've always got some sort of flat in the, even in the middle of the winter, I've got flowers in the garden. I've got winter um, winter roses, I think they're called, which look nothing like roses, but they're very nice, very nice. Hello to Paul Finney. Morning, Paul. Um, Mary says she likes definition. Well, you never know. I might get a bit of different bit bit of definition. I don't, all my shirts now fit, Mary. <clears throat> My swimming trunks, I have to do the, the this shirt, certainly did not fit a couple of weeks ago. Do you want to see? Look. This shirt did not, I couldn't do it up a couple of weeks ago. Look now. Right? That's loose. I mean, nine pounds is a hell of a lot of weight to lose when you think about it. You go down, so nine pounds, I believe, uh, someone will correct me here probably, I believe nine pounds is about, f is it four kilos? Hang on. Let's have a look. LBS to kilo. <clears throat> uh, okay, so nine pounds is, oh yes, four. So nine pounds is four kilos. Isn't that four bags of sugar? I think that's about four bags of sugar. So you pick up four bags of sugar, that's the amount of weight I lost. So far, so far. Um, Lewis is sitting there with, Lewis, go and have another bag of cheese and onion, darling. There you are, my love. You enjoy those. Mary likes cheesy watsits, do you? They are quite nice. They they smell a bit like my sister's feet, though, cheesy watsits, I have to say. Dreadful smell. Dreadful. Mary lost a stone and a half last year on Slimming World. Uh, loved it. Crisps. <laughs> Rachel, I beg your pardon. Did I say Rosemary earlier? It's Rachel who's dealing with the... Um, uh, the charity karaoke event that we're doing in Woking on the 29th of July. I beg your pardon, Rachel. I don't know where, where did I get Rosemary from? I don't know where I got Rosemary from. Sorry, Rachel. Oh, she's upset now. She's up, but she can't say anything. Otherwise, I won't turn up. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
So remember that before you have a go at me, lady. <laughs> when are we doing lunch? I need to come down to the pub and have lunch. Let me have a look. Can I give you a date now? You don't mind if I sort this out with someone, do you, boys and girls? Let's have a look. Donate. So, so I made a donation this week to someone. Um, 27. Can we go... Can we go... Can I meet you Tuesday afternoon down the pub? Let me know, all right? Diary standing here by, then I can just check it out. Because they've had a refurbishment, haven't they? I need to have a face refurbishment, I think, me. <laughs> oh, but that's, that's the other thing. Going back to that big brother, there's one girl on there, and I don't know what she's done to her face. She's only young. She's got about 10 inches of makeup on. She's got the strangest tan that you've ever seen, which is obviously a fake tan of some sort. And her lips are like, eh? great big fat lips. Why, do, why does she think that looks good? And she's as thin as a rake. Probably underneath all that crap. And I think she's had something injected into her lips. Is it Botox I have injected into the lips? To make it look, oh, so it looks nice. But it doesn't look nice. I bet underneath all that, she's really pretty. Why do they want to look fake all the time? Don't understand that. I really don't. Um, Lewis says, uh, what a load of rubbish Big Brother is. Well, it is. It is. What do you, have you crashed? Did you crash? <laughs> Come on, Danny. You like that kitchen. I would like my kitchen done in the Big Brother way. I've got to have my living done. The living room is the next to be done. I want to have the living room done and the kitchen. Now, when I say I want the kitchen done, I don't need, an, I don't want a new kitchen. I just need it, you know, painted and freshened up. Or I might change the doors in the kitchen units. I might do that. And also... I mean, it's a bit expensive, but I've, I've, we were in the garden centre a couple of weeks ago, me and Ronnie, and they do all sorts of other stuff in the garden centre. And that one of the things they, they do is kitchens. Now, as I say, I don't need a new kitchen or anything like that. But they do this, like, granite top thing. It's not solid granite. It actually is quite thin, say, about, I don't know, about that big, like a quarter of an inch or something. And it fits over your existing worktops. I do like the look of that. And it was like red with like a little bit of a spark in it. That was very, very nice. Very nice indeed. Um, good morning to Emily, who says, I know it caused a trophy for my grana, but she wasn't aware of any pain. What was that, darling? Uh, what, what caused a trophy? What is a trophy? I don't know what that is, darling. Tell me what that is. Tell me what that is. Uh, Danny says, can we call yet? Oh, no, Danny, don't call tonight, darling. We're not late night. You'll send people to sleep if you start talking. I have to insist the phone lines are not open yet. They may be open later, but not yet. Maybe open later, Danny. <laughs> uh, good morning to Tony Power. Greetings, Tony. Rachel, what is it now? Oh, 27 for our little, for our, for our lunch. Yes, does that suit you? Does that suit you? Hello to Tom Clark. That's toilet. Tom is known as Toilet Tom, aren't you, Tom? I can't tell you why that is. I can't tell you why that is. But that is Toilet Tom there, a very, very good friend of mine. He used to be uh, one of the members of Belushi's staff in London Bridge, where I had some of my best ever times working. I was saying this the other day, you know, there are, uh, oh, there's, there's motion at my front door. Let me just check. It's probably a cat. One moment. I've got a camera on the front door. And whenever it detects motion, I get a message, you see. Would you want to see it? It would be very dark now. It's probably a cat. And is that working? Yeah, so that's in black and white now. So there's nothing there. So it's likely. Can you see it? It's good, isn't it? That's my front door. See, that's outside my front door. I've got all grass and trees and things there. It was likely to be a cat because there's nothing there at the moment. Oh, yes. Yes. We're all protected here. The thing is, by the time you've seen the camera, it's already got you and recorded you. Stupid people often think that the recording is held within the camera. Oh, no, dear. No, no, no. You have been beamed. Beamed, boys and girls, across satellites, halfway across the globe and recorded on a computer in China or somewhere like that. It's true. Uh, yes, 
Okay, let us know tomorrow, and that would be excellent, that will. Oh, Danny Davis has got some exciting news. Have you really? Oh, Danny, go on then. Call in, but no more than five minutes. Unless, unless, greetings, Paul. Greetings, Paul Stone. Victoria Sponge is with us. And Ashley's there as well. Greetings, Ashley. Danny, I'll let you call in, right? But no more than five minutes. No more than five minutes. And your voice needs to sound a little bit more excited than your usual monotone. Like what they got in the church choir sometimes. We, actually, we've got a good choir at church, funnily enough. Do you know there's only a seven-second delay tonight? That's, that's pretty short, isn't it? My uh, new air conditioning is working very well. All right, there you go, Danny. Call in if you want to. 0208 344 is my local London number. Here he comes, Danny Davis in Wrexham in Wales. Hello, Danny. Good evening, Chris. How are we? Bonjour, mon ami. Comment ça va? Ça va bien. Yeah, talking about that, I see Theresa May's in the European place again, isn't she? Did you see it on the news? Yes, I've seen it, and uh, she's allowed the people that come out of the, that live in this country five years to settle. Five years? So what does that mean? If you're here, you stay. I think that's very fair. I mean, why would yeah. you want to send people back after all that time? I absolutely think that's, that's correct. I cannot understand yeah. people that want to send back people that have been here for years and years, worked with usually very underpaid jobs and paid their taxes. Why would you want to send people back like that? You wouldn't, would you? No. If you've been here five years, then you you should stay. I think, I th actually, I think even less than five years. I think two years, if you're working, one year and over. That's what I think. But I do agree with the whole too many people coming. And I don't care where that's from. You know, I think there's too many people coming here. Our services and transport networks cannot cope. So the door needs to be closed. But, you know, absolutely, don't start sending people back. That's just wrong. That's wrong. What do you think? I, I, think, I think it is. I, I, it's very political, that, because five years, I think you can do a lot in five years because you can you could marry somebody in the UK you yes. can, and then you get your passport <laughs> anyway but a lot if that's the case I think that will be on the rise Do, does that make sense they'll start marrying British people what to they'll come? find them and they'll go oh let's get oh, them to stay sake. here because well, otherwise we all, if, if we all know that's already going on people come over here they have um, is it called a rain, not arranged marriage is it no that's a different thing altogether it's that's like religion, that. what's it called that's religion. Yeah, that's religion. That, that's what true. is it called now? A rain, what, ma but they marry to come here. They never even met the person. My, so yeah, maybe but, there's but, hope for me to get married if that's the case. Perhaps I could advertise myself on some like foreign website. You know, English man available to marry, you know, um, scaffolder type with tattoos around about 35 years old. What do you reckon? Would that work? Well, you say that's your description or that's what the type of person you want. Oh, that's the sort of person I want. Well, obviously, that's oh, yeah, not that, my yeah. description. We'll do, do that. Think, do you think I should have a tattoo then, Danny? Do you, would like, my, like, would you like me to tattoo your name on my, uh, on my left um, cheek? It depends which cheek. What do you mean? <laughs> this is a family-based programme. Why do you have to bring oh. it down like that, Danny? You, cause you, you've got a right cheek and a left cheek. Yes, right and left. Yeah. But there's, there's two types of cheeks. Oh, get on there. with it, dear. Come on, tell us the exciting news. And can you the... try and do it in an excited voice? I am very excited to tell you this news. Well, get on with it, dear. We're waiting. Five minutes you're allowed. Left... You've had three. Chop, chop. I've left, I've left Greg. Why? Because You've only been there a few months. I've left because it was it was too tiring and there's lots of things gone on oh, that you, I don't agree poor with. Old but anyway, what was, that's what was going on. Oh, do that, let us know. Do let us know. They were they they, they were underpaying me. Underpaying. Uh, yeah, because I was doing the hours and putting the hours in, and then they were getting changed by someone above me. Right. So. I put a complaint in and then went and just literally went, right, here's my notice. 
I want that payment in my bank by a said date. And oh. that's going to happen this month, the end of this month. Um, okay. And I said, if you don't do it, I'll take it to court. Fair enough. Um, and that person that's above me has been um, investigated and sacked. They've, they've kind of agreed. Sacked they've, them. They've, they've, they should be flogged in the street. Flogged and beaten. That's what I always say. This is the only way to deal with people. Oh, oh, you mustn't be nasty to them. You've got to talk to them and understand them. No, you haven't. They need to be dragged out into the street and beaten in front of people. That is the only way to deal with badness. Continue. And I've also gone back to the old job of pub work. All right, OK. A well-known... A well-known brand, Mitchells and Butlers. Oh, I used to work Mitchells and Butlers. Yes. Um, yes. A lot of them became uh, Stonegate. Is it Stonegate? Yeah, that's correct. A lot of yeah, them became correct. Stonegate. Yeah. Um, but I've, I've left that one now. That, the two brewers were Stonegate, uh, so I'm not in the group at all now. I'm yeah, very... Mitchells and Butlers the one I work for, the brand, because they've got several brands up and down. Really Have they? Oh, right, OK. Exact. Oh, excellent. I work for... I work for a company called Ember Inns. And where where is this then? This is in Wrexham. It's closer to home, actually. Lovely. Are you just a barman or so, what? Um, I'm a trainee assistant. So. Excellent. And you're much happier there? Yeah, much happier. The hours are not as long. The hours aren't, you know, ridiculous. Yeah. The, 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 the job description is kind of similar to what I was doing. Right. But there'll be someone above me. That's a general, so everything yes. doesn't fall on me. Does that make sense? Oh, sorry, just a minute. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm playing yeah, myself here for some reason. That's it. Sorry. Carry on. So, yeah, I'm, I enjoy pub work and bar work and all that kind of stuff. I hosted a quiz night of my own last night in the pub. Right. Oh, yeah. Did it go all right? So Where'd you I'll get, be doing... Where'd you get the questions? Very well. Say again? Did you write the questions yourself or what? No, they get posted by a company called Red Tooth. Red Tooth, okay, yeah. Yeah, they do out. They they send them out to our pubs each week. Right. Um, and I hosted it last night, and it's all for charity. All the money that we raise goes to charity. Is this the one with um, remote controls, Red Tooth? Say again. Is Red Tooth the quiz company with remote controls? Do they have remote controls too... to the players, or or are they just writing on bits of paper? Writing on bits of paper at the moment, okay. but we are going interactive next week. <clears throat> and how? You, what's that one called? I don't know. We we haven't been briefed on that yet, so all we know is that it's going interactive as of next week. So, okay. Yeah. So I should uh, be asking. I'll be asking you very soon for some tips on uh, more quizzing You're natures. Just, well, you've got to be you've got to be um, strong and stable. A little bit like myself in the Conservative government at the moment. Uh, and you've got to be happy, happy. Don't look bloody miserable or sound miserable. Even if you are, you know, even if your pet goldfish has just died, you must not show that to the audience. You do the job, you finish the job, you get in your little car, and then you cry on your own. Not in front of the people, lovey. That's it. Be I happy do, at all I times. I do jokes as well. Huh? I do jokes as well and take the mick out of them and go, that team's doing crap. Jokes. Yeah, like little, you know, like little quiz type jokes, like, you know, get the audience involved and ask them what they think the answer is oh. instead of going. So you you must be quite humorous. Are you quite humorous when you're doing that? Yeah. Uh. I walk around the pub. Um, I make sure they're not cheating. I have a laugh with them. I give them, a you know, about 30 seconds to think about the answer, then put it down. And then, you know, it's all about all about engaging with the public. Good. That is exactly what it's about. Well, congratulations, Danny Davis in Wrexham, Wales. Yeah. Yay. Well done, darling. Well done, lovey. Thank you very much. Well, anyway, I'll let you get on with uh, your chat show. Thank you. Lots of love to you, Danny. Congratulations. And you. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. There we are, gang. The lovely Danny in Wales. He really is a nice chap. He is, and good luck to him. I love to see people getting on like that. Uh, 0208 if you want to join us uh, on the phone tonight, OK? Uh, Alan says, good evening. Good evening, Alan. Uh, Danny doesn't like the kitchen. Really? You don't like the Big Brother kitchen? Let me show it to you again. I want one of these kitchens. Well, which one is it? Is it that one? There it is. 
I want one of those kitchens. Who's going to pay for one of those to be installed in my house? I love that floor. Love that floor. The slate tiles that I've got are in, um, as I say, in the kitchen and in my um, uh, in my um, bathroom as well. But um, I, I could, I suppose, because the living room, I'd like to do the living room next. Give that a paint. And I quite like that colour scheme there. I mean, I could get rid of the carpet and have a floor like that in the living room, couldn't I? I know it's probably not your cup of tea, but I like, you see, I like bright colours. I can't be having plain colours everywhere. In fact, in this room, the, the wall in front of me, which is, a, actually, you can see it here, one minute. You can see the wall in front of me. It's just awful. Look at it. Look at that colour. Look at it. You, what you can't see is holes everywhere. Because where, <laughs> where I've done DIY, putting up these shelves and all that, it's not very good. It doesn't really work. That's a clock over there, by the way, if you're wondering what that is. You ever wondered about all that? I think I've shown you this before. Big light. There's two of those, one each side. You can't see the other one over there. This is all equipment here and uh, stuff. It's all quite old, actually. There's nothing new here. Nothing of great... Ba I've said this before, you know, and, and I don't say this. I don't say this in case there's any burglars watching, but there really is nothing of value in here at all. <laughs> you can get a 50-inch TV for now, about 200 quid. That's probably the most valuable thing in this house, the 50-inch the TV, which is a Panasonic, a plasma. It's not even a smart TV. No jewellery. Why do you need jewellery? Put some metal hanging and rings. And I didn't. What do you need all that for? A load of old rubbish, that is. Um, Rachel says the kitchen looks like it's from The Sims. What's The Sims? Oh, is that that's a, that's a computer game thing, isn't it? The Sims? I think computer game thing, perhaps. Something like that. Good evening to Justin this evening. Good evening, Justin. Welcome. Justin runs a pokey little pub up north, don't you? Called The Steam Coach in Hemel Hempstead. Yes, indeed. Alan says, have you always used that room for your talk shows? Yes, I have. Uh, when I used to do all recorded shows, I would do them from different places, uh, mainly in this room, but I'd also do them from the garden. Used to talk shows from the garden. Uh, but obviously I couldn't do that live. I still can't do that. Well, you could, but it'd been an awful lot of effort to move everything downstairs and back up again for an hour's show. So no, yeah. And I've done it out a few times, Alan. If you have a look on your... YouTube um, uh, site, then, um, what's wrong with you, Jerry? What do you mean, can you not see me? Well, you can, can't, can hardly miss you, can you? Can hardly miss you, can't see you. Can hardly miss you, carrying all that weight, dear. God's sake, man. What was I saying? Yes, I've done it out a few times. Actually, if, Alan, if you want to look at some of the old backgrounds and so oh, no I was in the other room before in the big room before and I had a settee and all that business oh yeah I had a little settee I bought a settee I bought this um specifically to do the show I bought this sofa bed from John Lewis and it was as hard as nails especially when he made it into a bed it was so hard people that stayed here would sleep on it and complain to me in the morning <laughs> Hello to Ben. Ben joins us this evening. Good evening, Ben. <laughs> oh, for God's sake, of course I'm going to miss some people sometimes when I'm not saying hello. Is that what it's about? You just pop on here to, for me to say hello and then you go again. What's all that about? Stay, dear. Stay. Why don't you be with me tonight? Not you, Joey. You're not my sort. In fact, there's no one on here who's my sort tonight except for Ben. Ben, you could be my sort, I reckon. Good evening, Ben. Musician, sound designer, and music production. I think you could be my sort, Ben. What do you reckon? Do you want to go out with a huge television personality like myself? Not so huge anymore since I lost the weight. <laughs> oh, look, see, turn down again. Turn down again, once again. Dear me. All right, Heidi, greetings to Heidi as well. Did you, uh, uh, as I say, phone line open today? 020-8144-3477. 020-8144-3477. Now, what else have I got uh, to read you today? I've got, actually, a load of stories that I've been hanging on to here. Oh, it's about to become Friday, isn't it? There won't be a, fr there won't be a Friday show. This show will do both days today because we're kind of in the middle. All right, you're, you're about to see, here's an exciting moment, boys and girls. You're about to see the clock change over to Friday. 
OK, that's going to happen very soon with a very loud noise. It goes click, 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 click. That should happen any second now, I think. One minute. Do you want me to wait for it? It's always, I, find, I get very excited by things like that. We'll hear it in a minute. Come on, chop, chop. Is it another 30 seconds? Oh, hang on a minute. It might be another 30 seconds or so. Oh. Did you see that? How exciting is that? You don't see that very often, do you? It's a funny thing, isn't it? It's a bit like, you know, when the street lamps come on. When you're driving along the motorway and suddenly all the lights come on. Very, very exciting. Greetings, <coughs> Heidi in London. How are you? Hello, my darling. How are you? Hello, Heidi. You all right, sweetheart? Yeah, how are you? I'm very well indeed, darling. Ah, oh, we were talking about the marriages thing earlier. Apparently it's called a scam marriage. That's when yeah. people come, they, people, so they come over to to live here so they just find any old person to get married. Yeah. I think that might be the only chance that I've got of marriage, to be honest. No, I don't think so. Well, who is there? There's no one for me, love. Only if me, only if me. Well, you have had a few relationships. I wouldn't. You well, it's know. been a few, but I get. I used to get bored so easily, Heidi. Did you I find know. that at well, all, that's dear? You. That's your problem. Oh, that, it that, is. That's you. It is. It is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is you. What news do you have for us today, Heidi? I hope it's happy news. I don't want depressing news today. I want to be happy. Happy, happy, happy. Continue. I've got my upgrade on Tuesday. You got your what? Is that happy enough for you? Your upgrade. My upgrade. Your upgrade. What were you having? Yeah. A new head? New arms? What? You, what do you mean? A new upgrade? <laughs> new pair of knickers. You haven't bought new knickers. What? After all these years? Good God, yeah. Heidi! I can't <laughs> believe it. This girl has had the same knickers on for thirty-five years. She's upgraded her knickers and she's getting the new ones this week. Is that right, lovey? Yeah, I've got them on Tuesday. <laughs> well. <laughs> what are you upgrading? <laughs> what have you upgraded then? I've upgraded my phone. Oh, your phone. Oh, OK. Mm. What are you getting then? Well, I've got it already. What is it? Well, you said you were up you were upgrading it. You didn't say you'd no, upgrade. No, I did. Oh, you did. Oh, if, you look, if you look... Right. What, what am I looking I've got at? I my upgrade on Tuesday. What am I looking at? Look at your messages. Oh, right. There's so yeah, many the of them, I can't mess find your one. The first one, I'm above Hebron. Well, what? Just Hebron. tell us what sort of what sort it is, my darling. What sort is it? I've got the new iPhone Seven. Oh, the iPhone Seven. Now, tell mm -hmm. me, have you got that? A do you have you got a, like a monthly payment yeah. there type thing? May I ask yeah. how much you're paying per month and who you're with? Forty pounds a month. I'm with O2. O2? Mm. And you get a new phone, what, every two years, three years? Yeah, yeah. Was it three? No, two. Two years. Oh, I suppose that's not bad. That's not bad. Yeah, so it's a, a um, 24-month contract. Right. I'm, I'm, on the, uh, I'm on the three network. Um, I tend not to upgrade my iPhone to the newest one simply because it's so expensive. Um, I usually buy one outright. And I'll go for one or two below that one, if you see what I mean. And that lasts me two, three years usually before I'll upgrade it again. But then if well, you no, buy... Well, no, with O2, it's a free upgrade. So after... Well, no, it's three... not. Um, it's not it really. Is. No, no, you're, you're paying in that £40, quite a lot of that. Now, if you was to go SIM only, for example... I'm with the three network now. Three. I moved from EE to three. I've got unlimited data, unlimited phone yeah. calls, and unlimited texts, £30 a month. But I'm not yeah. buying a phone. Now, probably, what, what, what tariff are you on there on the O2 thing? O2 unlimited. Okay, is that everything unlimited? Yeah, so I'll get unlimited calls. Well, even the data... Um... Yeah, no, I'll get three gig of data. Three, oh, so it's not unlimited. Three gig of data isn't that much. Do you see what I'm saying well, to you? So with well, the, it, is, it is for me. It's, it's currently for me. You never it get... depends how much you use your phone. See, for you, you, you 
you need quite a lot there because you're doing radio shows and all this yeah. business. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes, you know, you, you um, do it from America. So obviously and of course, you're going to leave. And of course, you're, you're, leave. you're in your flat most of the time, aren't you? So you just use the well, Wi-Fi in there, don't you? Well, more my Wi-Fi in my house, yeah. But yeah. when I go out, yeah, it's my data. Yeah, so you don't need any more. But what I'm saying is that if you um uh, uh if if you can if you if you don't want a new phone, then once you come to the end of that contract, always switch to a SIM only deal. You can get SIM only deals for like ten quid, ten quid a month or something like that, you know. Yeah, but you you then might not do the upper yeah. seven on that deal, you see. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Okay. Um, can I just read a couple of messages here? Let me just... Uh, blah, 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 blah. Alan wants to know, where's the spider plant gone? Oh, well, you know we change this around at the back regularly. Do you like my... I've got a new United Kingdom talk tele teapot that Adam the plumber bought me, which I think is quite... Oh, cool. Nice. Me. We're displaying oh, yeah. that at the moment. We're displaying that at the moment. United Kingdom talk teapot. Oh, that's cool. It's camp, isn't it? I like that. Very um, camp. Yeah, Adam bought me that. Adam bought me that. Um, so that's where the spider plant's gone. Let me have a look. Who are um, you, dear? Hey, do you think so? Oh, yeah. <laughs> ben says, I get 10 gigs of Ryan gigs. <laughs> Hello to Peter Hyde, who joins us tonight as well. Anyway, carry on, uh, darling. I'm pleased you got your iPhone and you're happy with it and all that, love. I am very happy with it. I just want to say congratulations on your weight loss. Oh, thank you very much. Have you seen the certificate? My half a stone no. awesome achievement certificate. Yes. There it is. Good then. Half a stone. Lovely. Very pleased with that. I'll have to Ooh, do, I, thought, I was thinking about displaying cute. it on the very wall. Nice. I, won't. I might have to stretch that out as soon as well. But what the um the cloth at the back has gone all creased up. I think that's when the boys were doing the um the new air conditioning in here, which is working nicely now. Congratulations, Chris. Thank you, darling. Have you ever done anything like that? A weight loss um, pro... Well, you don't need to, really, do you, love? No, not really. You don't? If I, you lost, know, if well, I lost on the real weight, I'd disappear. Well, I always say... You know what I say? I don't care what people look like. You know me. How long you know me for, Howdy? I don't care what people like. It doesn't bother me, right? Um, if you are happy with being, I don't know, 20 stone, that's OK. That's fine. No problem with that. As long as you're, you know, you, you understand the health risks... If you're not mm. happy, then do something about it. That's what I say. Yeah. If you're happy like that, fine. So be it. Just understand that if, you, if you're badly overweight, you will have help. Not might. You are very likely no, to have health will. problems at some point. Very likely. One of those things yeah. is diabetes. Do you have diabetes? No. No, you don't have that. I mean, can you just... I mean, there's, there's bound to be one or two people watching this tonight who have got diabetes. I mean, I can't think of just having to inject yourself several times a day. I mean, God, you know, no one wants that, really, do they? And you, you know that if you're overweight, you, you are at risk of um, uh, becoming a, a bit like that, aren't you? I do know friends of mine that have got diabetes. And who? they have to uh, they have to be very careful because if they miss their insulin shot, then they could go into a anaphylactic shock. So they've got to be really careful. Yeah. And they can't... I they can't eat certain foods and they have to watch their glucose sugar level. Mm. I was oh, I was going yeah. out with someone years ago. I'm going back here 25 years ago. And um, I I had, uh, well, we, we woke up in the morning and I woke up and uh, I bought a cup of tea up. I said, are you awake yet? Nothing. Are you awake yet? And, uh, and I pushed him. Well, I thought he was dead. Honestly, no, in my it's, life, it's I probably, thought... It's probably something to the dad's to camera. Correct. He, he, uh, 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 he, he weren't moving at all. Anyway, I called this ambulance out. And uh, I said, well, he's not moving. I said, he is breathing. By now, I'd realised he was breathing. And the ambulance man, first thing he said is, is he diabetic? I said, yeah, he does the injections. All right, OK, then. So then he, he turned him over and got this injection and put it in his arm. And then suddenly... Uh, this this lad I was going out with, uh, uh, oh, what happened? Like that. I said, well, what yeah. on earth was that? He said he he had a, a hypo, I think, apparently a hypo. A hypo. hypo, yeah. What, is that short for something? 
it's like um, it's not as mu- it's not it's not as bad as an anaphylactic right. shock, but mm. it's just where the um, chemical that the body needs it it stops giving it for some reason. Oh right, okay. So, so it you need to, to give an injection to yeah. you know shock the body back Very into. Very dangerous chem- though. What if I? I mean, what if I hadn't been there? Or if he'd have been at his house all on his own. This, um, this is about 25 years ago, as long as, as, long ago as that. I, I do keep in contact with him. The funny thing is he's even had new kidneys now. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's got oh. loads of new bits and bits. Got lovely scars. I see him. I haven't actually met him in person for years and years and years, but he showed me a photograph of his scars. Um, but, uh, yeah, very, very dangerous when you think about it, something like that, isn't it? it is and people dangerous. don't realise that. I don't think they realise that. They have to keep care of their feet, I believe. Because they can lose yep. feet or limbs or arms and eyes, apparently, as well, eyes. I mean, if you keep on top of it, it's like a lot of long-term chronic conditions. Now, chronic doesn't necessarily mean you've got something really bad. Chronic, and a lot of people don't realise this, chronic means long-term. It doesn't mean yeah. you've got really bad asthma, but if you've got chronic asthma, you've had it and will have it for a long time. Mm. Um. But a lot of this stuff, as long as you keep on top of it, you're okay. The moment you see yeah. something going wrong, back down the quacks, you know, and see, mm. what's, see what's going on there. Let's just say hello to Lily, who joins us tonight. Hello, Lily. Hope your daughter had a hey, lovely Lily. birthday. Lily's, it was Lily's daughter's birthday, either, I think it was yesterday or the day before. Um, Angel, 16. Do you oh, remember being 16, Heidi? Were you 16? When you, Were you 16, sorry? Me? Yeah, do you remember being 16? Uh, basically. What were you like at 16? Were you outrageous? Yeah, most probably. <laughs> Would you want to be 16 again? Um, would I? No, I mean, I, I wouldn't. Really? Oh, I wouldn't. I hated my teenage... When I think back, actually, my teenage years and very early 20s, absolute disaster. Absolute disaster. I would never want to be that age again. A lot of the young no. people they see, you know, anyone who's over the age of 20 is really old. They don't realise. They don't realise that. Uh, and you then you get your heart broken and all this business. And you're oh, I wouldn't want to go mm. there again. No, thank you very much. And I'll tell you why I wouldn't want to be 16 again. Because now we've got, um, when I first came to the gay scene, being gay was very taboo. It was very in the closet. You know, you couldn't hold your hands in public, couldn't kiss in public, could do this, could do that. It was, it was ridiculous. Now, since Clause 28 has been abolished, it's like an even playing field for everyone. And I love it. Well, I've got no one to hold hands with. I mean, I've got the cat, but she's not interested, dear. I hold onto her oh, paw cat. sometimes and she pulls it back from me all the time. <laughs> oh, what, what's her name again? Katie the cat. She's in the garden at the That's moment. I'm how, up. how is she? Yeah, yeah. Oh, she's all, she's all right. She's all right. She's getting thinner and older and more not with it. But there you go. You know, look after her as long as I can. Actually, you know, something I've been dying. I keep wanting to mention it to you. That it's forgetting. You know, at the start of your shows. You know, when you do the countdown. Yes. Well, instead of that clock that goes, like, 20 minutes or something, or, no, four minutes and does a countdown, which yes. is very boring to look at, oh. why don't you put um, um, videos up for, for that amount of time? You know, so we've got something to look at while we're waiting. Uh, videos, it, pictures, with the clock in the anything, corner or something like anything. that. Don't yeah, you like, anything. Don't you like my squares? Don't you like my squares? Do you not like those? When it gets close to the time that comes on, yeah, but... Oh, you like, like that, that what... two-minute thing? that Because that, that's two minutes. That's the last two minutes, that is, when the squares come on. Yeah, so maybe you could, like, edit your... You start with uh, videos or... OK. ...of what you've done, and then you can mix... When it gets to two minutes, you can mix it in with your diamond thing. I hear what you're saying. So, really... You know, like my closing video, a long one of those, but with a clock in the corner so that people know it's a countdown. Yes. Okay. I I hear you. 
That's a good idea, Heidi. That's a very good idea. It will require quite a lot of work. But I hear where you're coming from there, and I quite like that idea. So there we are. But then, and then with the diamond thing, do you want that on the full screen or would stick that in the corner somewhere? I'm not sure. I'll have to. I'll have a little play around with that. Thank you, Heidi, for your suggestion. Sorry, darling. No, stick, stick the diamond in the full screen because at least then you know this is it. It's coming. Do you know what I mean? Don't stick it in the corner. I think a diamond in the full screen and possibly videos in the four corners. That might be possible. I'll work on it. I'll work on that. Thank you, Heidi, darling. A pleasure to talk no, to you as what? always, my darling, all right? What else was I going to say to you? Oh, yeah. You know what? Um, um, I thought you were going Grandpa then, dear. Grandpa Tower. Yes. You know, I went to go, I went to go and volunteer. Anyway, forget that. You know the uh, march on Downing Street? Oh, yes. What is this, the March well, Against watched... Rage or something crap like that, wasn't it? Just people uh, going to cause trouble, really. No, no, actually, I wasn't on that one. I was on the other one. But anyway, I was watching it on the TV, uh, the March on Downing Street, and I swear to God, I saw Mark. Mark who? Mark, uh, uh, Sparklos. Who? Mark, you know the one who does karaoke on here? Oh, Mark Cording? Yeah. Oh, was he on the march as well? I swear to God, oh, right. I've got a picture of it. Oh, well, I don't I, know anything uh, about that. Anyway, thanks for calling in today, Heidi. You have a good evening, my darling, and stay tuned. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. I don't know why it just dropped into my head then, but um, has anyone been watching that excellent programme, Hospital People? That is hilarious. Have you seen that yet? It's on BBC One Colour, I think, or BBC Two, one and two. And, um... Um, it's a comedy programme and it seems to be centred around this bloke who does hospital radio and he's just off his head. He's just mad as a hatter and he's got this technical assistant, beautiful girl, I can't remember what her name is now, and she tries, she keeps trying to get a word in Edgeways and he won't let her in. Hilarious. Anyone seen that? Hospital people? Give it a watch if you haven't, OK? Uh, Peter <clears throat> has lost weight. He says, I was 16 stone nine six months ago. Now I'm 15 stone four. Excellent. And try and get to 14. Yeah, just keep at it, Peter. Keep at it. Um, I do find it easier in a group. I don't know if you've ever considered going to Slimmer's World or something like that, you know. They are really good. Very, very friendly. And once you're in a group, I think it eggs you on to carry on. And if you don't lose weight, you know, people don't start laughing and pointing. Don't matter how big you are. There's none of that goes on there, you know. we got, a, there's one big girl in there. No one takes the mick. We're all in there for the same thing. We are all helping each other. It's, it's fantastic. And it's a little bit of a social group as well. It's, it's very pleasant. Perhaps you want to try something like that. Look out your own one. You'll probably find five or six in your area at various different times. Just choose the ones that suit shirt. It's like five quid a week. That's all it is, Peter. It's worth going, my friend, all right? Peter's stopped eating meat. Good. Good. There's no excuse for us sitting there eating dead animals, my dear. <laughs> Alan says, I wish was in primary school. Their dinners were better than my wife's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no one can cook as better as your mum can, can you? My mum was a wonderful cook. Oh, my God. Was there a single dinner I didn't like? No, I don't think so. Wonderful dinners we used to have. So there we are. Hello to Jane West, who's just joining us uh, as well on the show this evening. Right, a couple of these news stories. I've got to just um, read this to you. As, as it's late night, we can do this one now. Uh, it was on the BBC website some time ago. When a new style of seat suddenly appeared on Mexico City's metro system, it was labelled as inappropriate, uncomfortable, humiliating and embarrassing. It was supposed to be. The seat moulded to include a, protrude, a protruding willy and chest was designed to highlight sexual harassment experienced by female passengers. I mean, whatever next? 
The explanation next to the men only label read, it is uncomfortable to sit here, but that is nothing compared to the sexual violence that women suffer on their daily journeys. I think that's a bit much, isn't it? Having a willy on a seat like that, moulded to a seat. The seat was not is not a permanent fixture, but part of a campaign, but the response has been mixed. Oh, funny that. Underneath a video of the stunt, which has been seen more than 700,000 times in the past 10 days, some viewers praised the idea, while others called it sexist and unfair to men. And, um, yeah, well, I mean, I can see that. I can see that. What a funny thing. Can you just imagine getting on a tube train and seeing a protruding willy on one of the seats? <laughs> Who would be the first to sit on that <laughs> 020-8144-3477. Is there a fly in here? Gone. 020-8144-3477. If you fancy a call in tonight, boys, it goes nearly time to go now. I'm going to have a cup of tea, actually, in a minute. And um, uh, probably some uh, strawberries and uh, and some uh, fat-free yoghurt before I go to bed. So any more calls, nice and quickly. 020-8144-3477. Where's my other story here? Just a minute. I've got so many old stories here that I'm not, um, where is it now? I'm, I've lost half of them. Let's just get rid of some of this. I must have a clear up in here. What I sometimes do after a while, these bits of paper here build up, you see, and it, eventually I just pick the whole lot up and chuck them all out. Now, what's this one here? <laughs> I don't know what that doesn't mean anything, does it? No, it doesn't mean anything. I'm sure I had another one here to read out to you. Where is it now? Is it on the floor there? Oh, here it is. Here it is. Here. <clears throat> Look at this. Don't know if you've ever been in a race or anything like this. This was uh, in the news um, a few weeks ago, actually. Look at this. This bloke couldn't believe his luck. Pibernick is his name. As he pulled well clear of the chasing pack of cyclists and celebrated his win only to realise he had another 6.2 kilometres to go. <laughs> Dear me. Luca Pebernick suffered the ultimate humiliation on the fifth stage of Giro d'Italia. I thought that was a bank. <laughs> the Slovenian cyclist couldn't believe his luck as he pulled well clear of the pack during the stage on Wednesday. As he closed in on the finish line, Pibernick turned round to check just how far he was ahead. The Baron Merida rider raised his arms in delight as he crossed the finish line, thinking he had secured a victory. There's some pictures here, actually. Look at these lovely pictures there. Uh, lovely colour pictures there. Even the ringing of the bell didn't put him off as he continued his celebrations. Only when he turned round... To see the pack chasing him, did the Slovenian click on that there was another 6.2 uh, metres lap to go? Mile lap to kilometre lap to go. Unsurprisingly, he failed to pick up the speed again and ended up finishing at 148th. <laughs> oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. Can you imagine that? During a race and you think you've finished, you forgot to do a lap. <laughs> You see these people in the swimming pool sometimes. They think they're like professional swimmers in there, don't they? God. Alan says, when did you sleep, stop eating meat? Oh, um, that's about five years ago now. Five years ago. Uh, if you look on YouTube, just type in factory farming pigs or cows or anything like that, and it will totally destroy you. It destroyed me, so I didn't want any more of it. So that's why I stopped eating bits and pieces all right technical news from the bbc website this morning and um i'm so excited that one day we will be able to get into cars and not have to drive them just push a button and it will say where would you like to go and i could say you know uh, camden town please what road camden high street what number 23 and then it would just go and there's nothing for you to do I find that very exciting. Well, a demonstration of driverless cars in Nuneaton, here in the UK, will be followed later this year by trials on public roads. Soon, 
we are going to see in the UK vehicles with no one drive. I suppose there'd be someone in there. I would imagine there'd be someone in there, won't there? Huh? Auto Drive, a collaboration between Jaguar, Land Rover, Ford and Tata Motors. What's Tata Motors? Is that a Chinese company, Tata, or Indian? I think one of the two. Showed off how autonomous cars can talk to each other. It included warning drivers when an emergency vehicle was approaching and offering real-time traffic information. The first set of public road trials are due to take place in Milton Keynes and Coventry by the end of this year. A fleet of up to 40 self-driving pavement-based pods will also be introduced in pedestrian areas of Milton Keynes. Now, I've seen these. Uh, we, I think I read out this story uh, some months ago. And there are areas of Milton Keynes, pedestrians, and that you get in these pods and they just take you around the shops. I was, which is a bit lazy, really. I mean, you know, the trouble is, I can see it, it, it happens now. People don't walk to school, do they? You know, two minutes down the road, oh, let's all get in the car. and all. No, you just bloody well walk. And we'll just get fatter and fatter, won't we? It's just mad. So I don't know why you need these around Milton Keynes. Anyway, it's, it's a good way to, to test them, I suppose. Another aspect of the demo showed how connected cars can detect the presence of other connected cars on the approach to a junction and warn drivers if there's a high probability of a collision. So that, that's fantastic. We're actually going to see these. A consortium of British companies known as Driven are planning to test driverless cars on motorways in 2019. It's only two years away. The UK government has paved the way for driverless cars, laying out a legislative framework in the Queen's speech, which included plans to update car insurance so that driverless vehicles would be subject to the same rules as normal ones. See, this is the thing, you know, if, if, a, if, if, a, if a driverless car has a crash, whose fault is that? Are they Indian, are they? Thank you, Alan, Indian. I wonder whose fault that would be. I, w I wonder how they, they fit in all that. But I am looking, I'm very much looking forward to um, uh, driverless cars and being able to go from A to B without having to look at the road. You just sit there, maybe close your eyes, especially on the way home. You know, sometimes I get a bit tired on the way home. Actually, no, that's not true. Not so much now because I've got rid of all my late nights. I don't do any late nights. And 12 o'clock is the latest I've finished now. But I do look forward to the day I can just get in a car, push a button and go. Wonderful. All right, we're going to wrap things up now, boys and girls. Uh, I've got some birthdays to do, OK? We'll do Thursday's birthdays first and Fridays as well on the show today because uh, we're covering the both show, both days, all right? Uh, happy birthday, 54, to Peter Schuler. Schooler, school, I think it is. Schooler, 54 today. Peter was always a regular customer at the Black Cat, weren't you, Peter? Happy birthday to you, sir. Uh, jo Joannes, Jonas or Joannes Littman is 69 today, England supporter. Happy birthday, uh, Jonas, I think it is. Minnie Alderson, 50 years old today. Happy birthday, Minnie. Uh, Josmar de Lima, 31 years old uh, Thursday. Terry Gormley, 66 years old. we got Stephen Best, 36 years old. Lala, 58. Happy birthday, Lala. Uh, he's been around to a lot of my karaoke nights, sir. Uh, uh, in North London that I've done over the years. He's a nice chap, he is. He always does I Believe I Can Fly. And I can't think of the other ones he does. But happy birthday, Lala. Chris uh, Sloan is a nice young 31 today. Lovely puppy you got there. Happy birthday, Chris. Mark Deacon. Greetings, Mark. What's with that beard? Got a big beard now, haven't you? 36, another uh, black cap customer there. Happy birthday to Mark Deacon today. And um, we'll also do Friday's birthdays right now if I can bring those up because that should have changed by now let me have a look there it is ah Yago Yago who I worked with uh, at the two brewers in Clapham till I uh, left just a couple of weeks ago now Yago is 25 years old today happy birthday Yago all right I'm thinking about you thinking about you missing you missing you just you okay uh, Callum Dove happy birthday Callum today that's Friday Emma Watling is 32 years old today on this Friday. Genevieve Murray Dunsmore 
Genevieve, I think it is. Genevieve, what a lovely name. Is that a picture of you with Jeremy Corbyn there? Happy birthday, Genevieve, okay. Uh, Chad Sheldon, happy birthday to Chad. Rob Thompson, hello, Rob. 35 years old today. William White today is 55 years old today. And Steve Crumley, it's happy birthday to you as well, sir. So here comes the song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy Thursday birthdays and happy Friday birthdays. Happy birthday to you. Have a nice birthday, everyone, boys and girls. And uh, I hope you had a nice birthday to the people whose birthdays it was uh, yesterday as well. OK, right. Any final messages to read out? Because I don't want to miss those. Where is it now? That one there, that one there. And we're done, I think. Nope, we're done now, boys and girls. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, tonight, it's Friday night, so I'll be hosting karaoke tonight at Central Station in Wharfdale Road, King's Cross. Starts at 8.30 and finishes at 12 midnight if you want to come and join us down there. Now, I've got all the wiring now and a little gadget to get the words to come on both TV screens in the bar. I did try and do it Monday night, but... Um, it, I couldn't get it to work, and I, I had staple gunned the wire to the wall. What I think I'd done was stapled through the wire, because actually the the cable is too large for the particular staple gun I was using. So um, I bought it back here, wired it all up here, and everything worked. So I'll, I'll put it up with tape next time. I may or may not have time to do that tomorrow before we start. I think probably unlikely uh, I'll have to go in there possibly early on Saturday night, because Saturday night is, is Saturday night. I'll be able to do it Saturday night. If I go in early Saturday night, then I can do it all and, and then it'll be ready for Monday. But it might be ready for tomorrow. OK, so karaoke tomorrow night. Do join us at, uh, sorry, tonight, that's Friday night and every Friday. Join us at Central Station from 8.30 until 12 midnight, OK? Hope you enjoyed our little uh, chat together tonight, boys and girls. And I'll see you again very soon. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Cheerio now.